hello. Hello, how are you doing? I would love to take this opportunity to welcome you to our second annual Christmas premiere celebration. And it is where we craft you through 47 hours of Christmas stories, games, poems, and just a ton of crafting fun. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming out and for enjoying this Christmas premiere. My name is Tia Smith, and as you can see, I am Tia's Crazy Craft Addiction. My crafting has really taken on a life form of its own, and I am not afraid to admit it. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you're new, and also hit that notification bell so that you can come back and you can enjoy more craziness as we continue into the new year. Now, I know that you're, uh, you're going to want to return because one thing that you guys have repeatedly asked me for is my thoughts and my ideas on how to teatize, teatize uh, my diamond paintings. And so I have a few items in store. I will be guest starring on one of the Blinging in the New Year series that's coming out. And I will be giving you some of my tips and some of the ideas that I use as I go into the new year. So make sure you come back to enjoy me on that. Also, underway is our TSA, or Get Your TSA collab. That is being handled by Deb with Kelly. And I do plan to join that starting on the 1st because that continues on through the end of January. Yay! So as you can see, I do have some things coming up. I want to continue to sparkle and teatize as we go into the new year. So you guys asked for it. Make sure you stay tuned. But I don't plan to disappoint you at all whatsoever. So, with that said, 2020, it has just been a time of uncertainty, and I, you know, I, I did write a poem that I kind of wanted to share with you, um, your thoughts on the poem, but one of the things that I wanted to do is to kind of capitalize on just the pentameter of the moment. As you guys know, 2020, um, we've had our ups and downs. We've had our times of strife, happiness, turmoil. I know when it kicked off, we were like 2020, 2020. We are out of the teen, 20 teens, and we are in 2020. And so that was a time for rejoice and happiness. We wanted to see what the year held for us. Obviously, we had a lot of disappointment in 2020 did not pan out the way many of us had hoped as the year started. We are embarking on a new time and a new era where we're coming into 2021. And so our hope is renewed. It's refreshed. As we end this year, we hope to go into the next one with just so much positivity, so much desire for change. So I wanted to kind of capture the moment and how we all have felt um, as we've come through 2020. I hope that this doesn't offend anyone. It was made in jest and I had a lot of fun with it. But this is a poem written by me, Tia Smith. Um, that's copyrighted, don't steal it. My red-headed man is pouting again. And for all the world to see, we all took a vote and ended on a note. And ain't nobody happy is how it looks to me. We're stuck inside and can't go nowhere. And ain't nothing really open. But I got my wallet out, my tracking app on, 
watching every truck pass by, just a hoping. But I am alive with a smile on my face and my butterflies and glitter are plenty. But I'm struggling hard to sparkle and shine through the rest of this crazy crappy Christmas 2020. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I had a lot of fun writing it. Um, I, I, I said something about my butterflies and um, are a plenty crappy Christmas 2020 and it just kind of formed from there but I do feel like it definitely kind of encompasses you know what we're thinking you know how this year has panned out and I'm hoping that everyone got a good chuckle um it definitely was made in jest <laughs> um and so I have you know uh read it to uh, my daughter I read it to my son and they both laughed they thought it was funny as well um, so again, you know, if nothing else, you know, we can we can't have a little bit of humor. I'm trying to pull myself through, you know, some hard times that I've gone through over the last week or so. And um, yeah, it's always good to laugh. Um, fortunately, I have used humor a lot to kind of define, you know, myself. I use humor through a lot of hard times. I use humor to get me through to deal with you know anything and when I look back on it um, it is uh, therapeutic for me and I wouldn't give up those times at all the times that I've had to use humor so with that said <laughs> I definitely appreciate that and I uh, hopefully again you guys enjoyed it um, <laughs> so you know I uh, <laughs> I had that little chuckle to myself and um, I got to thinking, and I really do think a lot, like like in terms of um, Technicolor movies, you know, things that I can laugh about. So I was wondering if, um, you know, if I went to sleep, I, I could wake up and I could I could recall my dreams as if they were an entire plot. Some of my favorite uh, dreams have been just plots outside of themselves, you know, just uh, uh, cantankerous camping trips, although I did have one earlier this year. Um, uh, I can see like plot resemblances when I do dream in Technicolor. Uh, and, you know, um, hijinks of Sue. You know, we're talking plumbing <laughs> um, issues. We're talking, you know, backed up fireplaces and things. I really do dream that ridiculously. <laughs> so some of the things that I was wondering is what would happen if a dream that I had, and I dreamt so deeply and so profoundly in Technicolor, what if it was turned into a movie? <laughs> You know, obviously the first thing that I would have to do is come up with a plot line. You know, um, I had one really good plot line. I went to sleep. I woke up. I couldn't stop laughing, you know, and I kind of chuckled my morning away. And this was a few weeks ago. And I got to talking to someone about it. And, and they were laughing and laughing at me. Um, they thought it was funny. But I was like, you know, I'm thinking all of these holiday uh, Hallmark movies and things like that. I just need a little something different. Just a little different, you know. A little color, a little spice added um, to it. I dream in such technicolor that I can I could come up with something. I could come up with something that would make me happy. You know, like, what if we had a buff girl, I mean buff, she big, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, you know, she falls for a dude that's five seven. She could pick him up, put him on his hip, and she could save the day. You know, um, they're the couple. You don't ever really see that, but uh, they are the couple, unfortunately, that nobody would ever see coming. Um, but you know, love ensues or something. <laughs> Who would we get to play that part? 
You know, um, obviously when it comes to thinking of tall women, Brigitte Nielsen always comes to mind. She's tall, you know, she's she's what they call back in the 80s, you know, blonde bombshell, I think. Um, but am I really thinking of anything original? Because didn't she already live that life? Didn't she already have someone that she could put on her hip? She was the buff chick, <laughs> and, she, and hilarity ensued. They even had a show. So um, <laughs> when I got to thinking of it like that, I was like, am I really being original, you know, or no? So then I said, well, I need to maybe reverse that plot line because uh, it appears that that one's already taken up. So then I started to think, what if, you know, rich family, and they fall on hard times, and they have to do what they can to, um, you know, to overcome some obstacle. I got to thinking about that. And I said, hey, Tia, you're just, you're not original. You're not original at all. And why? Because that's already been done to death as well. You know, they always, and just in the nick of time, something comes through. And the family is saved. We saved the hotel. We saved the mansion, we saved the yacht, we saved the Mercedes, you know. What would we do if we kind of changed that around? So I came up with another poem. <laughs> yes, yes. I came up with another poem that I'm going to give to you guys. And this poem, it kind of changes the scenario a little bit. Don't laugh too much. And again, if I offend, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this one is by Tia Smith also. Uh, it may not be as good as the last one. I didn't put my, as much effort into it. So just, you know, applaud. Be kind. <laughs> by midnight, the deceitful family has to bestow an act of kindness or lose their millions for good. They call on their spoiled daughter, who hatches a plan to include Hank, the homeboy, from her dealer's neighborhood. Can, can you see where this is going? Okay. I'm, I'm just, you know, that's a plot twist. That's a cue right there. It's a plot twist here coming up. <laughs> but Hank's not interested in any of her flirting. And all, all their hijinks and plots not working. You see, Hank was in tune to their tricks, and he refused to be used as their toy. The deadline passed, they lost all their money, and it all was given to Hank, the holiday homeboy. <laughs> now, how is that for a plot twist? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so when I dream, I do dream in Technicolor, and there is a difference. <laughs> Although I had to pull it out of myself. So I was very proud of that, and I had a lot of people laughing when I read that to them. Um, I was worried, though. I was worried because I'm used to dreaming, like I said, in Technicolor. And usually I can run my dream down, and people are like, yeah, 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 that was good. Ooh, that was real good. So I felt like this time around, you know, what's happening? Am I getting old? What's going on? But yeah, you know, I forgot the plot twist. It's always got to be a plot twist. So, so make sure that you guys kind of comment in the, um, in, you know, comment in the comment section in the chat box and let me know, does that resemble a plot that you've ever seen done before? Obviously, the previous one was definitely a plot that we saw before. What did you guys think when um, Brigitte, well, and guess who the homeboy is? Because I couldn't change it up. It was a plot twist, but I had to lead a character to say. It was definitely flavor. <laughs> uh, but he got the money in the end. <laughs> uh, who do you see playing that part as the holiday homeboy? <laughs> uh, so I just, you know, I wanted to add just a little bit of humor. I thought it was funny. It was a dream that I had. I couldn't stop laughing. Um, but yeah, you know, my dreams, they, they are funny, you know. 
Um, they give me so much to laugh about and things, especially, as I said before, during this time, this year, you know, this year was, you know, it was full of ups and downs. I had, um, a few months ago, I was able to take part in the, um, the ep where we all focused on something that we were grateful for. And so I wanted to kind of go back over, just kind of highlight that, because I didn't focus too much on that. There was a series that was already going on. And so at the time, I, you know, I wanted to say this, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but I didn't want, you know, to kind of take away from the focus of that, that group and that collab. But one of the biggest things that I have been grateful for is my daughter. She had one of the roughest 2020s out of, you know, a lot of groups and things. Not aside from anyone who's been sick, who suffered, you know, uh, from, you know, COVID. Um, but, I mean, as far as something occurring completely outside of their control and not having to do anything but just deal with it and cope with it. My daughter was officially um, a, a 2020 graduate. And one of the worst things that occurred for the 2020 graduate students from high school is that they lost the ability to rein in their last year. They lost the ability for prom. They lost the ability to have a senior skip day. They lost that last little bit of, you know, camaraderie as they closed out and put an end and a period to the final days of their youth. Um, many of them turned either 18 during their senior year or just shortly after they graduated. And life takes a different turn at that point. There's new expectations and things. And the unfortunate part is there's not anything that can be done for them to get that back. My daughter, fortunately, had already started. And anyone who's been to my channel, you guys definitely know that she'd already started in junior high taking um, advanced classes. Um, by the time she finished her sophomore year in school, she was done with high school classes, and she went on to enter the university. Because she stayed in their homeschool program, she could still participate in the school sports, and she could still participate in the extracurricular activities such as choir, um, band, if she wanted to be in the band, dance, or you know any athletic uh, such as softball. Um, my daughter was a cheerleader as well as she was um, on the softball team. So those were still afforded to her, thankfully. But what she couldn't do is have her prom. Um, she couldn't have her scholarship ceremony. My daughter earned seven scholarships. My daughter, uh, she was the editor of the high school newspaper. She didn't get a chance to do any uh, journalism beats or anything. So she lost out on a lot. But one of the things that I'm most grateful for um, that occurred during that time is because my daughter was very outgoing, because my daughter was, you know, friendly and kind of got along with a lot of different people, she was invited to go to prom. Um, there was a group of girls who went stag the year before. So as a sophomore, she was able to enjoy prom, and she already um, had, her, well, not a sophomore, I do apologize, as a junior. She'd already got to go to senior prom. Um, she got to enjoy it as a junior. And um, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful because she got to hang out. She got to have the all-night event. They had a limo. They had an Airbnb. They got to spend, it was a group of, I believe, about 21 or 22 of them. They all went in on the Airbnb. Um, they had a limo. Um, my nephew, who was a few years older than um, my daughter and my son, they contributed and helped with her part. They wanted her to have a good time. Um, and this was her junior year. It was before her senior year. 
And I'm just so grateful that she got to have that experience because she would have missed out. She would not have been able to enjoy that at all. So that's one of the things that I was grateful for. Um, I don't feel that she missed a lot of events. They were not precious because she didn't get to do them with her own class of friends, but she still got to do them. And those are memories that she can still hold on to. My son, I'm kind of grateful for him. The year started out, he was my co-star on my show. So many of you know my son, um, Justin. You know he is my partner in craft and that for years he and I have crafted together. My daughter, she just has a particular taste in crafts. Um, she's not really fond of the crafts that we do. Um, there are a few crafts that um, she's interested in, and we'll try and see what we can do about incorporating those. You know, maybe I can uh, travel down the lane of crafts that she's in. But um, he started off the year, you know, with some just some problematic um, issues when it comes to crafting and dating. Um, he really enjoys crafting. He has a core group of buddies. His buddies, um, they look at uh, crafting, they look at diamond painting, and they want to do it. So there's definitely no issues there. But there is always, always, unless the woman is in to the same craft as him, there's been some, you know, questions and things that he has to answer to, you know, when it comes to his love of diamond painting and things. Um, there were a few uh, shows that were done where we kind of just talked in just about, you know, everything, prior relationships, just having a good time. <laughs> and it did cause just an uproar. There was um, one particular relationship that he was in um, we were talking about a prior relationship, and she was in the audience that night. And, um, you know, she heard us. There wasn't anything disrespectful being said, you know, just that, you know, it was difficult uh, because a lot of the crafting time that we were spending together, that prior relationship, you know, she, she was jealous and wanted that time all for herself. So the new girlfriend, I called her new booty, in case y'all remember, <laughs> the new girlfriend was in the audience. And um, I don't know if you guys remember, Justin had got up like probably about 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes before that show ended. I thought he just had to, you know, go to the restroom and, you know, ended up checking his phone or something and was delayed in getting back. And the show had ended by the time, you know, he came back out. When he came back out, he revealed that, unfortunately, they, he was back there arguing um, because whatever we were discussing, he didn't really recall it being anything bad. We literally had to sit and rewatch the show just to get a grasp of what we talked about. Um, and so, you know, the year it did, you know, pan out to be a little bit better for him, but you guys don't see him that much anymore. You don't see him that much because his hours have changed and things. Um, you know, he went on to put forth uh, focus a little bit more around, you know, growth and things like that, um, which I, I definitely, you know, applaud. There's never going to be a time when I don't, you know, support uh, any one of my kids' decision to better themselves financially um, at all. So his decision was that he wanted to grow. He was thinking about, you know, maybe going back to school, changing his major. He had changed his major when mama was paying. He had changed his major three times, I think, or four times. One of those, I can't remember, but <laughs> literally was like, you gotta, you gotta ease up on my pocket, you know. We can't keep starting over. Um, be paying forever. <laughs> So, you know, either let's get a degree, let's get an associate or something in this, or let's, let's take the time out, let's take a break until we know exactly what it is that we want to do. And he agreed because he still at that point did not know 
Um, he just knew that the classes and the way that they described, you know, the workforce after that was not something that he thought he would be interested in. And that's okay. That's okay because the point is to go to school to do something that you'll absolutely love. And so I'm grateful that, you know, he was able to say, you know, this is not for me. You know, how about I wait, kind of put myself through school, see what I can do at work. So that was the goal. He definitely um, sought that goal. He went in. He became very successful. His hours had to change. Um, once his hours changed, he was on a path to where he could grow in the company. He wanted that. You know, he sat down to talk to. There were some people that I um, used to work with that had entered the company as well. And they, you know, kind of gave him some insight. They worked in different divisions, um, but they gave him some insight into, you know, just the core principles that the company stands for. And if he is interested in growing, you know, how to exhibit that and how to embody that. Um, also, what he could get out of growth. I mean, nobody maybe wants to be stagnant. Everyone wants to maybe do better, to earn more, and maybe, you know, if possible, you know, to be in a position to where there's some stability. You can be at that company for a while. So, with that said, um, he definitely went for that. There were some certifications that um, were going to be coming up that had... Uh, been brought to his attention. He, you know, studied. He tried for it. He got it, and I'm um, very proud of him because he gave himself um, he gave himself a goal, and he definitely reached it. Um, he's definitely doing well. <laughs> uh, he got promoted, and as of right now, he making what I made, and I I worked hard to get to where I had been. Um, I am also grateful for some of my own personal triumphs. Um, when I started off this year, you know, um, I worked in what is known as an essential business. And there were there was fear all throughout. There was never a time when we did not fear um, that um, you know, we could lose our jobs. There was a lot of fear. There was talk. So there wasn't there wasn't any surprise or anything. But what I am grateful for is once it happened and it came down, I was hurt. I was shocked. I didn't expect because there was talk, but we would overcome whatever the obstacle would be that they said, hey, you know, we probably won't have to invite any layoffs if we hit this revenue, you know, perspective. And we would hit it. And so then, hey, we can't promise anything for the next quarter if we can hit this, you know, you know, perspective. And so we would reach that perspective and hit every bullet point on there. And each time they said, you know, we might not have to revisit this if we did that, those you know, objectives were met. So it did come to my shock when, unfortunately, we didn't meet or we met and they still were short um, and needed to move forward with, you know, starting to reduce workforce. So that was a shock. And I, you know, was hurt because I was on the list. Um, but what I was grateful for is that through some planning, things that I'm always talking to my kids about, through you know financial planning, financial preparation, um, I did tell my kids, hey, listen, we'll be okay. You know, obviously things will be you know different. Um, I won't be as frivolous, but we'll be okay. And I had sat down, I went over the finances, I explained everything to them, and I let them know what I'm most grateful for is the fact that with nothing coming in, no additional assistance or anything, you know, we have about seven, maybe eight months in this day and age 
and what we were going through. That was, for me, something that I felt was great. That was before I pulled any resources from, like, um, unemployment. That was before I pulled any 401k, before I pulled any additional resources. You know, I felt like I've done great, you know, because this was a this was something I never, you know, thought I'd planned for. Uh, a few years ago, a job had left town and they closed our division and they extended the offer for many of the managers for us to be able to transfer to other locations. But it wasn't an ideal situation for me because I had kids. I had kids in school and I didn't want them to have to relocate and things of that nature. So I was not prepared at that time to be off without unemployment and nothing coming in for eight months. So I was very proud of myself that I had, you know, set up, you know, just a financial, uh, I guess, foundation to where I could afford to be selective. I could afford to make sure that an opportunity was the right opportunity and that I didn't rush out and have to take whatever. Um, so that was something I was grateful for, um, for me, you know, for this year. And hopefully if anyone else, you know, finds themselves in that same boat, that same situation, that you're able to do the same. Because I know that it's not easy what, what's going on with how companies are set up. There are businesses that aren't even set up to be able to extend themselves for a couple of additional months and things. And if, you know, they had to, they had, you know, to lose something, uh, perhaps, you know, any additional income, perhaps they wouldn't be able to make payroll for the next month or the next, you know. So I felt grateful that I was able to, you know, at least provide that foundation for myself and for the kids. So I don't want to take up too much time talking about what I'm grateful for. I just know that I didn't, I, I did not, you know, uh, stay on the topic too long during that uh, dp -thon. And so I wanted to, at least because of the time of the year that it is, and everyone is talking about their traditions and what they're most grateful for, I wanted to touch on that. <sighs> so, now what we have as we close out 2020 um we want to you know we want to see what we can get out of 2021 and that leads us into new year's resolutions everyone will be i mean i don't even know if people do them anymore uh, i know i don't most people that have new year's resolutions january 1st of a year <laughs> by April, like, do we really still have the resolution? <laughs> and let's face it, most of the New Year's resolutions are about weight loss, you know? How many times are we going to turn the TV on in the middle of the night and we're going to just see paid programming, paid, every paid programming, every station, anyone that's buying advertising space in the middle of the night are going to rely on our weak-willed selves to, to sell their product. And oh, is it coming. They know that we've used the money that we did have. We spent that to buy gifts for others. And they know now we're about to spend our money to buy gifts for ourselves. But everyone's going to be looking ahead and looking forward to these summer bikini bodies. That they start off with that. I think half the programs even even call themselves bikini body exercise, <laughs> the bikini body peel, the bikini body uh, put these pants on and it'll shrink you down. You know, you know what they need to do? They need to come up with a bikini body mirror. You know what I'm saying? You look in the mirror, an instant bikini body. That's what they need to do. That's that's where money would be best spent. Cause let's let's face it. People see what they want to see anyway. So, with that said, 
want, as long as you're seeing what you want to see, I'm seeing what I want to see. <laughs> Do we need to play games and, and fool ourselves? Let's just get the mirror, you know, and let's just see what we want to see. <laughs> when I go into uh, New Year's resolutions, I say stuff like, you know, oh, I'm going to make an affirmation. I'm going to do an attestation. I, you know, I say things like that. I try nowadays not to say I'm going to have a New Year's resolution because I already know come April, it's done. I, it's not going to still be in place. I, I say stuff like I want to be a, a better mom. I want to be a better person, you know. <laughs> Even those get thrown out. <laughs> Even those are hard sometimes. It's hard to be a better person when somebody piss you the hell off and cut you off in traffic, things like that. I wonder what it'd be like, and y'all can help me out with this, but I wonder what it would be like to just resolve to tell the truth just one day. Like, what would it be like if I said, we're going to tell the truth. Just, you know, it's got to be one day because it ain't going to last until no April. I can't imagine anyone telling the truth for no four months. <laughs> I mean, don't nobody exercise for four months. How could they tell the truth for four months? You know, they already didn't start fibbing to themselves when they get on the exercise. I could do this. That's a lie. You know you can't do it. I mean, you can say I could try. I'm going to overcome this. But I can do this. Mm -mm. Sometimes, you know, we're fooling ourselves. But think about how men would be. If we all resolve, tell the truth one day, can you imagine how hilarious it would be? Man, men would be like, uh, 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 yeah, honey, uh, yeah, you do look fat in that. <laughs> oh, baby, come on now. You know you got one eye bigger than the other. You know you're cock eyed like your granny. Yep, yep. Or, or here's my favorite. What? Well, I, all I said was your breath stink. <laughs> Uh, yes, I can see it. I can see it. Women women can be just as brutal, though. I can see women right now. Is this poop in your underwear? Nasty ass. Yeah, I can, I can see it now. Oh, I see your butt crack every time you bend over. Yep. <laughs> oh, here's my favorite. Wow. Your team really does suck. <laughs> that one right there get everybody in trouble on Super Bowl Sunday anyway. So, <laughs> well, we really would only be able to do this for one day because half the population would be in jail and the other half would probably be dead. <laughs> you know I'm right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My goodness, I just keep thinking about that. So here's what I want. What I want is uh, I want to move into 2020, and I want to talk about what I want to, I mean, not 2020. Whew, cross that off. As I move into 2021, I want to talk about what I'd like to get out of 2021. First and foremost, and this is probably just very critical, very necessary, but what I need to get out of 2021 off the bat, I need a Men of Hallmark calendar. Yes, I do. And I'm going to tell you, <laughs> with this Men of Hallmark calendar, I'm going to give you a countdown. And you guys, you know, you guys can... Think what you want. You can enter in, you know, the men in the order that you like. But this is my little, you know, tasty catalog request, okay? First and foremost, I like all the men of Hallmark. So the fifth position is really up for grabs, you know, when it comes to the top ten, top five. Any of them up through number five. It's really up for grabs. Um, <laughs> I have so many favorites that I, I just couldn't pick from. Um, 
So any movie that's on, you know, if it's one of the standard usual hotties that aren't mentioned in the top four, then I will watch it, you know. But I do have my favorites that I, you know, would just sit there and drool. In the fourth position, Mr. Adrian Holmes. He is just chocolate goodness. Woof! You know, he is a good-looking guy. He is playing in, I believe the movie is called The Christmas Doctor with Holly Robinson Pete. And he is going to be the leading man in that. I saw a couple of other movies. He did um, a Lifetime movie with, um, I think her name is Tony Braxton. Um, and I think, I just thought he did a, a great job. He did a great job. I think he did a Hallmark movie last year or the year before. can't remember if it was 2019 or 2018. I want to say 2018. But I, I really thought he was cute in the picture. Um, yeah. You know, and my taste is all over. So, <laughs> but I really thought he was uh, attractive and I enjoyed the uh, the the picture. Moving over from there in my third position, you you guys, I feel like I grew up looking at him like, oh my gosh, uh, that boy, no, he too young for me. I can't look at him, but ooh, he fine. I can't look at him, but ooh, let me just get a quick, you know. His name is Jesse Metcalf. He is on um, Chesapeake. Yeah, Chesapeake Shores. And I, he has several um, movies that he does per year with Hallmark. I just think he is very cute. Uh, his gray eyes, um, his dark hair. Yeah. Unfortunately, he <laughs> I think he has a reputation for being known as a cheater in real life. <laughs> but I don't care. I'm not going to date him in real life anyway. I'm just going to drool over him. <laughs> so... Again, his name is Jesse Metcalf. He has several Hallmark movies. I think he did a movie, uh, 2018, um, and he played um, he played the guy next door, um, and that was a really cute movie. Different kind of plot. Really liked it. Um, but he has had several movies with Hallmark, um, and so yeah, he has made my men of Hallmark calendar in position number three. Next up, this man is the man of all men. Everyone can drool over him. He is um, he is old enough for all of us to, to drool over and not feel bad. <laughs> he is Mr. Victor Webster. His latest movie, I think, is called Five Star Christmas. And Mr. Webster is gorgeous. He, too, has dark hair, um, brown eyes. He looks Italian to me. Definitely looks Italian or something. He, he has that nice dark olive complexion. And he's tall. He's like 6'5 or something. He's, he looks very tall. And so um, who doesn't like him tall, dark, handsome? You know, he's, he's big, he's broad. He, he's not a little guy. You know, somebody that I drool over, sometimes they got to they gotta be able to handle the shoulders. You know, and my shoulders aren't little. <laughs> so I think that um, Mr. Victor Webster, he is definitely my man of Hallmark. I left me some him, and I drew over him every time I see him. So kudos to him. Shout out to him. The star of my Hallmark dreams, and I think a lot of you guys feel the same way. I do wish he was a little bit taller. I do. I give him a little bit more height, but I take him. I take him the way he is. This is Mr. Ryan Pavey. You guys know him as Unleashing Mr. Darcy, um, although I love him in anything he is in. Um, he is like 5'10", 5'11", something like that. You know, he's right there at the height mark that just makes him perfect. Um, dark hair, gray eyes. Um, I, I just think he is very attractive. Yes, he is definitely attractive. I know what you guys are saying. How come there's no blonde guys on the list? They're Mr. Andrew Walker. And then there is another guy, Robert Lund, I think his name is. Too 
blonde guys, they're doing some freaky weird stuff with their hair. Like some of these Hallmark people nowadays, their hair and their hair pieces are weird looking and things. So you got to still, you got to still have the drool factor. You know, I can't be drooling from the two movies before. I need to be able to drool from this, this, you know, current movie. That's what it's all about. It's marketing 101. And you got to be able to get me to say, oh, I can't wait to see that. I can't wait. So if I don't say that, then did you do a good job marketing? Or if you did do a good job marketing, what's the miss? And so for me, the miss is some of these hair. It's not just the men, though. There have been some women, like whatever they're doing with Miss Josie Bissett and her hair, her wig, horrible. Um, and every once in a while, Candace Cameron Bure, Bure, however you say that, every once in a while, you know, they need to adjust the hair piece they put on her also. So sometimes just let them be natural. But the pieces, they look horrible. And um, I don't know. I don't know if it's, you know, they try a new stylist, what's going on. But, you know, sometimes their hair just looks horrible. So that is why I didn't have a few of my favorites, you know, from the blonde in that top list. Let me know what you guys think. If you had a Men of Hallmark calendar or Men of Hallmark list, who would top your uh, top five or your top four? Who would that be? What movies are they in so I can check and see and try and watch it? Give me a drool factor. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> some other things that I want to see, that's definitely a must that I would love to see going into 2021. But some other things I, I really want to kind of narrow down what I want. And I want to just kind of let you know what this list would look like. First things first. If you use a dating app, and I know you guys, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you guys know that Dreaming of Diamonds with Drea when it's safe to date, is going to do a uh, dating profile for me on one of the dating apps. And then Marissa and Crashly are going to do some makeup for me and makeup tips so I can get some pictures and perhaps get out there in the dating world again because I haven't really dated. I know I talk about it a lot. I know I had some fun dating before my kids came along, but I haven't dated at all. And so what I would like to see going into 2021 is if you use a dating app, and this doesn't just have to be for men, but my request is going to be, please use a picture that was taken in the last two years. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm tired of seeing 27-year-old Carlos, Carlito, Charles, you know, he show up and he's 60-year-old Merlin or Melvin or Herbert. And you be like, what happened? Well, what, ha what happened? You know what I'm saying? So if you use a dating app going into 2021, it's a must. Make sure your picture was taken within the last two years. And then, and this is really important. This is really important. But I'm almost, I'm gonna have, it needs to be said. Have something. Have something from the pick. Have something from the pick. Still. Like, you know, your hair your teeth, still have something from the pic. You took a pic and within the last two years, please still have something from it. Still have your hair, still have your teeth, something. Is that is that too much to ask? You know, I just, I, I would say I'm asking for a friend, but I'm the friend. I'm asking for Drea. She, she, she's, the, you know, going to help me, okay? And it's not just men. It's not just men. 
you know, because I know this going to get flipped around and some dude going to watch it and be like, well, tell her, you know, we, we women too, you know, you know, butterflies aren't the only thing <laughs> that we be adding to pictures. Okay. So I understand, you know, women, they be cropping out the wrinkles, you know, they be cropping out their shoulders. <laughs> Oh, when they say you gonna have something to squeeze, they be talking about their belly, and you be thinking they talking about their butt. So yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. You know, I'm I'm just saying, I'm just saying, women. You know, I can't talk about the men folk and not bring us women folk in. Okay, so so I just wanted you know to get that out there because that's gonna be critical. Also, men. Also, men, back to the men. Got to get back to the men. But 2021, 20, I need for you to get yourself together. Get yourself together. If for nothing else, at least on paper, okay? Then I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. If you're living at home with your mama, on paper, it, you know, make it seem like, she moved in with you. You know what I'm saying? Change some things up. Do some things a little differently. But, you know, don't still be living in the room that you was in when you was 10. That's all I'm, I'm saying, you know. Move out that room, maybe get a new one. You know, fool me. Fool me a little bit. That's I just, I need you to fool me a little bit. You know, when I if I come over for a visit, I don't want stories like, yeah, and back over there, remember Herbert? Because when they start saying Herbert and you no longer Carlos, I'm going to know something. I'm going to know something. Remember Herbert what, in that corner over there? She got too many memories up in your place. It ain't your place. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to say. I know, you know, we're coming through a demic. We're coming through a demic. And, you know, people have had to do what they had to do. I get that. I do. That's why I said on paper, make it look good. You know, well, on paper, I mean in writing. We on, we on a dating app. Make it look good on the dating app. I don't want you to all the way lie to me, but like I said, make it look like it's yours. You know? <laughs> when you come pick me up, these are critical. This is critical. When you come pick me up, if you mentioned that you had a bike, I'm going to be honest. She's not going to be expecting a big wheel. I'm just saying. <laughs> not a tricycle either. Okay. I'm thinking you got a Harley. So if you have transportation issues, you might want to put that down because again we're working on our image 2021 and you know and and uh yeah we, we want to look good on paper so you talking bike i don't expect it to mean bicycle okay keep that in mind okay because I, I can't get on a big wheel i haven't been on a big wheel in probably 48 years so i don't want to be back on one okay if you tell me you got a roommate, you tell me you got a roommate, I am not expecting it to be your wife, ex-wife, girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. And again, as we said previously, if it's your mama, please, I know I'm respecting the demic, but, you know, make sure she just moved in with you. You you not you not home in your original you know you see what I'm saying I mean make it look like you was doing something at one point you know your mom and stuff come come home come here you know I'm your child I love you it's my turn to look out for you make it look good on paper that's all I'm saying I don't know how many times I watch these shows time and time again and everyone is always yeah he lived with his mama. You know, I should have known something, you know, so these are clues, they clues, you know, give me some clues. 
because I, you know, I'll take the red flag and I will go in the other direction. I, I won't keep going. I won't keep going. Okay. The last clue that I need to see, the last request or the last your resolution, I guess, that we need to work on going into 2020. Um, if you ain't got five on it, I don't either. Okay. I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to say it because I know I'm talking to Tia E's. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. You know, if you don't have the money to afford your request, then I can't assist you with that. But don't ask me for empty money because I don't have it if you ask asking for it. I'm serious. I'm serious. I don't know how many shows I watch, talk shows, court show. Even them show the um, soap operas where the man, you know, they call that dry begging. <laughs> oh, man, I ain't got this. And, oh, I need my this and I need my that. Mm, not the one. I'm not the one. So I'm just making it known in the beginning. But for anything, you know, any like Anytime we spend it on the phone, two hours laughing and giggling and having a good time. For any of that starts, I'm just letting you know now. Hell no, you can't have any money. Nope, I can't help. Um, usually it doesn't come out in that form. So I, that's why I'm, you know, saying it this way. Um, it usually comes out like, ooh, I sure wish... Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, come out like that. So, just so you know, in the event that you pose it to me in that form, the answer is still no. Whether you say it with a nice Julie Andrews request or whether it come out hood like they do on TV, I speak all the E's. I speak TV E's. I speak hood E's. And I speak Julie Andrews. So no, the answer is no. Just so you're aware, hopefully <laughs> um, so many of you are going to be joining me in that path and in that endeavor <laughs> as I move into 2021. <laughs> well, I would love to thank you all for joining me. This has been fun. I didn't get a lot of diamond painting done. I tried. You know, I was making sure that I kept you guys entertained, um, that I shared a little bit. I know that you are going to hear so many fun poems, so many games, and you're going to hear so many people's traditions. I just wanted to do a little something different because this is still early in the premieres. And as you guys continue to go on, hopefully you'll enjoy some of the... Um, traditions that are shared around the world. Before we go, I do have one last poem that I'm going to read to you guys. This poem I did not write, so if you want, you can go ahead and take this, but I am going to give the credit to uh, who it is due. It was written by Shell Silverstein, and the name of the poem is Snowball. Here we go. I made myself a snowball as perfect as could be. I thought I'd keep it as a pet and let it sleep with me. I made it some pajamas and a pillow for its head. Then last night it ran away, but first it wet the bed. <laughs> there you guys go. Thank you very much for coming out. You all have a great rest of your holiday. And again, Hit that subscribe if you're new to my channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell and come back and enjoy more with me. Bye.